Hello everyone. Welcome to Talent Battle. As TCS NQT test date is approaching faster and faster, all you students sure might be a bit nervous regarding your last minute revisions. To help you out, TCS itself has given out a mock test for all the students to practice and prepare for the actual NQT test on the 3rd and the 4th of August. I have also added the link in the description box below. Do check it out. In this video, we will be solving questions in the programming concepts and coding section from this mock test by TCS. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for updates as we will be uploading more and more videos regarding campus related placements to help you get placed in your dream companies. Let's begin. This is a coding question. It is write a program as per the below specifications. The conditions are accepts one integer number which will be a two digit number from STDIN. Second is interchange the two digits of this number. Third is print the resulting number to STD out. It can be assumed that the num input value will be such that there will be no zero as any of the two digits. Other than the calculated numerical output value, no other strings or messages should be printed to STD out. So let us begin by first understanding the question. We, we need to write a program and we are given with three conditions. The first is accepts one integer number. So this is the regarding the input which we will be providing to the program. It will be a two digit number from STDIN. Okay. The second is interchange the two digits of this number. So once we give input to this number, then the, fu uh, the function which we will be writing in the program, it will interchange the two numbers which we have given and print the output. And the third condition they have mentioned is the output should be printed in such a manner that there will be no zeros in the input number and there will be no strings or messages printed to STD out. So they want only the interchange number to be printed to STD out. So this is how they want it. The input number, it will be a two digit number, say X and Y, X, Y and the input should be from STD in. Output interchanged input number so it will be yx and to std out. So let us understand when in a C program they mention std in, it is the standard input stream. So we need to use scanf for the input. And when they mention standard uh, std out, it is the standard output stream. So we have to use the printf to write the output. Now let us begin with the program. This is the C code we have written to execute the problem statement. Okay. So the input they want it to be a two digit number. Okay. So we have it hash include stdi.h int main. We have taken uh, a variable integer, integer number, printf, enter a two digit number. Okay. And we are inputting it using the scanf. So let us understand this is an interchange program for a two digit number. Okay. So let us consider we have a number. 12 okay 12 is the input we have given to this program so the output should be 21 okay so the output should be 21 so in this case, we need to see how the number 12 is actually formed. So this is nothing but 2 is at the units place and 1 is at the tens place. Okay. So if we see the number is formed in a way 1 into 10 plus 2 into 1. This is the tens place 1 and this is the units place number 2. So we have multiplied 1 with 10 and 2 with 1 okay if we see what this forms is 10 plus 2 is 12 similarly to get the output 21 the formation will be 2 star 10 plus 1 star 1 equal to 21 right so first we need to get the face value the face value of x and the face value of y correct because initially 
or like this program will work for any number so we don't know what number we are giving so according to this logic if we move ahead we have declared three variables three integers so firstly to get the tens place digit we will divide the number the input number by 10 so whatever will be the quotient will be stored in this integer variable for finding the units place value we get a mod of the input number so whatever is the reminder will be stored in digit 2 now to form the new integer what we have to do is the units place number we will take it at the tens place number and multiply it by 10 the tens place number we will consider it for the units place and multiplied by 1 or no need for that correct and then when we print out it should print the result now let us compile this program okay so these are the compilation results and if we run the program enter a two digit number i enter 12 it gives 21 okay now let us try it with a different number say i enter 98 here is the result 89 so we get the result as as expected the next question in c language we can find the length of a string using which function below are the options so this is not a logical but a fact based question we can say the options provided can be confusing so to answer such questions you really need to know the names of the functions here for example this is related to the string functions it may happen the question might be updated for example which function in c copies a string to another string so try and go through different functions in c to answer such type of questions well the answer here is option a str alien this is the function used in c which can find the length of a string the next question is what is the output of the following code snippet the code snippet is hash include main and then the function is written int const a 5 a plus plus and printf if we observe this code snippet the first line itself seems to be erroneous the thing is they have mentioned hash include and then they have written the main function hash include expects a library file after the hash include keyword if we try to compile this program the code snippet which TCS has given we see the below compilation error it mentions hash include expects file name hence among the options the answer is a compile time error next question which statement is correct about circular linked list the options are a doubly circular linked list is not possible to implement b there is no pointer that points to null c a node can be inserted but cannot be deleted and d can be used to implement undo feature in word processing so first let us understand what is a circular linked list circular linked list in c is a linked list in which the last node points to the head or front node making the data structure look like a circle a circular linked list node can be implemented using sing singly linked or doubly linked list here the first option is doubly circular linked list is not possible to implement which is incorrect because circular linked list can be singly circular or doubly circular linked list second there is no pointer that points to null in a sing in a circular linked list the end node points to the head node or the front node so every node points to some node making it circular list that's why 
no pointer points to null is correct. If we check the other options, a node can be inserted but cannot be deleted. This is wrong because we can insert as well as we can delete and we can adjust the head node as well as the end node. So the answer is B. There is no pointer that points to null. Next question. Which of the below is not a predefined file stream in C language? Below are the options STDERR, STDIO, STDOUT and STDIN. If we observe the options below, uh, we see STDIO. STDIO is a C standard library header file. When we write a C program, we include a statement right in the beginning, hash include stdio.h. So this is the library file and it is not a file stream. And instead std air, std out and std in are all predefined file streams in C language. So the answer is B. Next question. Which of the below data types occupies the most amount of memory? The options are double, char, float and int. Now double requires 8 bytes of memory in C whereas char requires a single byte. Float requires 4 bytes and int requires 2 to 4 bytes. So the answer is A double. It requires the highest amount of memory among the 4 that is 8 bytes. Next question. The C built in function to release dynamic memory is A free, B de deallocate, C dispose and D release. So the correct option here is A free because the other three options deallocate, dispose and release are, aren't any functions in C. So the correct answer is A free. Next question. Size of operator is used to get the size of options are A data type only, B program file in memory, C available free memory and D data type or variable. So the thing is the size of operator returns the size of its operand or the parameter between its brackets. It can be applied to any data type as well as a variable. So the answer is D data type or variable. Size of operator cannot be used to check the available free memory in C. So C is definitely not an option as well as B. Next question. A queue is what type of a data structure? The options are A. Circular list B. First in first out C. Last in first out and D. Sequential access The answer here is B. First in first out A, C and D are the wrong options. Thank you from Talent Battle for watching this video. If you like this video, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel as we will be posting more and more campus related updates through our YouTube channel. Click on the bell icon for notifications related to placement update. We would like you to know that we have launched a 5 days TCS NQT specific crash course. If you have yet not started with your preparation, please go through all the details. I have also added a link in the description box below. All the very best for your TCS NQT exam. Stay tuned for more updates.